Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Kerry Lutz. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. If you're wondering what does Warren Buffett have against gold, why is he always bashing it? What's in it for Warren? Why does he think that paper is always better than gold? My next guest, a first timer on the show, Jordan Roy Burns, a chartered market technician with the DailyGold.com, and he's here to explain Warren's scenario. Jordan, how you doing? I'm great, Kerry. Thanks for having me on. It's really nice to have you on. Always good to have on a new guest to bring a new perspective on things. You seem to have a little bit of a beef with Warren Buffett, don't you? Well, I, I, beef might be a little bit too strong of a word, but I mean, I, I just generally speaking, I don't, I don't disagree with that much of what he said. It was more his, uh, his kind of explanation for gold's bull market, which kind of, I guess, uh, peeved me a little bit and. You know, he didn't really call it a bull market, so that's kind of a quick a quick summary for your listeners as we start. I'll bet you that in 2007 and 2008, he wished he owned gold and silver, because Berkshire Hathaway took some major hits those years, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure, you know, the reason why he, he has to keep talking about gold and writing about it, even though he doesn't like it, is obviously because he's getting, you know, shareholders are probably asking him about it every day. Uh, you know, they're probably calling up the company and he's probably getting a lot of mail. So he's, he's probably getting ticked off at, you know, just the continuous stream of people telling him, hey, you know, gold's going up. Why, you know, why, why, don't you, why aren't you involved in gold? So I'm sure he's kind of uh, a little upset about that. <laughs> well, good. Let him be upset. But the, the fact of the matter is, as you said in your article, 10-year bull market, right? Or is it 11? Are we on the 11th? Um, it's gone up from, uh, I bought my first ounce in 1999 for $282. So now we're up today uh, on February 23rd. We're up to, what, about 1785 That's quite a run-up. And you can't just say that it's a barbarous relic, serves no purpose whatsoever, and it's just people playing on fear. Bull markets that last 10 years shows some staying power and some validity as far as gold's role as a an indicator canary in the gold mine if you will of the underlying monetary system and financial system health right right no i i think you're absolutely right there and i mean this this is a, a not to be too simple but this is a secular bull market i mean there's you know when stocks are in a bull market resources and gold don't do well and when stocks are in a bear market resources and gold i mean that's the place to be and that's what we're seeing right now and um you know a lot of uh, detractors they'll point to back there in the 70s oh it was only a 10 or 11 year bull market but you know the price of gold was fixed but if you look at the gold shares they actually had a bull market for about 20 years from 1960 to 1980 so that really tells you that the bull market back then was really a 20-year bull market not a 10-year bull market so the detractors can't use that reason and say oh well you know it's gone up the same amount of time it's going to end soon they, they they can't really use that and i and there's as you say i mean there's fundamental considerations for why gold's in a bull market i think very simply um it's it's you know you have major debt problems in the developed world and anytime you have a, a debt crisis as we're seeing it's always bearish very bad for currencies and you know bullish for hard assets and gold especially i mean if you just look at other parts of the world uh as i noted in my article you know e eastern europe southeast asia latin america just study history in the 20th century and just think about the you know the currency devaluations the over indebtedness of these governments and their their currencies were just completely trashed so i mean people who live in those areas of the world they certainly understand how currencies can be very unstable how they can lose purchasing power and i'm not saying we're going to go down the same road i mean i'm not one of those i'm not from that school of thought that says you know the dollar is going to be completely worthless and so forth i think we have to look at uh what happened uh in the uk you know after world war ii and 
you know, they ended up losing the reserve currency and their their currency basically just lost a lot of value slowly over a long period of time. And so that's kind of kind of what I see happening here with the dollar and the euro and the yen, although it could be kind of they, they, they could lose value in an accelerated fashion over the next 10 years or so. So I'm not again, I'm not saying we're going to have like a collapse or anything like that, but 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 certainly uh, this very strong bull market uh, in gold, I think, is, is going to continue because of those reasons. Yeah, so it could be a real race to the bottom then. And it's joined by all the major currencies because everybody's inflating, right? There's not a country out there that's not printing money out of thin air because there's no discipline. There's no limitation. And it's kind of like if you allowed your kids to each play Monopoly and one of them could print all the money they wanted and buy up everything and the other kid couldn't, then it wouldn't really be a fair game. So when one starts, they all have to start, right? Right, exactly. I mean, if one currency gets too strong or, or too weak, I mean, it, it can totally, I mean, the, the, as we, excuse me, as we know, the world is very interlinked nowadays, you know, the, the global economy, global trade, etc. So uh, if, if one currency gets out of whack, it can completely mess up the system. And so that's, um, that's a great point. I mean, when we see problems with the other currencies and the dollar strengthens, that just, that, that gives our policymakers the green light to, you know, pursue more of an inflationary policy. Uh, you know, and then they think they think that's beneficial to our economy and and, uh, and and so on and so forth. So, I mean, you're you're exactly right there. I mean, if, if one currency gets out of gets out of whack uh, or, or get, you know, the dollar gets too weak, then, you know, the other the other countries will they have to pursue a similar policy to, you know, weaken their currencies and, and keep things in line. Because, you know, the, anyone who knows uh, the history of capital markets, I mean, it's really the currency fluctuations can cause major major problems right and i just want to get back to one other thing because you you made a statement about the market behavior that when uh you know at certain times stock market's good and uh and gold is down and that really comes down to your real rate of return on uh on bonds right because when you're making negative returns on your debt instruments, then that's really bullish for gold. And we've never had a time where there's been a higher negative return on on bonds, on government bonds, supposedly safe investments, right? Right. I mean, you're exactly right. I mean, the, the, the when you have negative real interest rates, it's always very bullish for gold and um, bonds. I mean, that that's another story. I don't, I mean, to go off on a side note, I think when people have been buying bonds, it's, you know, with these people who are managing millions and millions of dollars and they need some place to put it temporarily, that that's why bonds have been going up because, you know, there's problems and then these big money managers, they can't, you know, they can't use all that money to buy gold. I mean, our bond market is the biggest, safest, most liquid in the world. And I think, um, you know, that that's really the biggest advantage we have over the rest of the world. Our bond market is just so big and so vast, so strong. And, you know, that's why you see bonds going up. It's because these managers who have millions of dollars and, you know, they instead of holding them in cash, they'll put them in bonds and at least they can earn a very tiny return. And, you know, they can pull it in. Uh, you know, they can take it out if they want. Uh, if they get scared, they can put it back in. So that I mean, that's a little comment there on bonds. But just to get back to. Um, I, I don't know if you want to get back to Warren Buffett. Um, sure. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't completely disagree with what he's saying, but. You know, because I, I, I understand, you know, owning, owning stocks, you know, they pay a dividend and, you know, it's good to own businesses. And he owns a lot of businesses. You know, he has investments that are benefiting from the bull market and commodities. I mean, he's big on railroads, I think. And Burlington, you know, the, uh, Burlington Resources, timber, and all the resources that are out west there, right? Right. And, I mean, they have to, you know, the railroads, they have to transport uh, yeah. those resources and... You know, I'm sure he owns agricultural companies and a lot of energy companies. I mean, those are also commodity companies, and they're a little. I mean, they're they're less speculative than gold and silver. Uh, those businesses are a little less dependent on commodity prices, but th I mean, they still are. There's still risk there with commodity prices, and um, for him to just totally, I mean, what peeves me again is just he totally dismisses gold as you know the reason it's going up is because these people who invest in it they don't like other markets. And, you know, they hate every other market and they're just buying it because of fear. And 
the only way it'll go up is there more people have to come to the same conclusion that that's why they're buying it and i mean i think that's really short-sighted of him and really ignorant i mean he's not what, what, i mean he's not talking about what we talked about before with the currency destruction and, and the very strong fundamentals that are driving this bull market and so i mean that's what bothers me he doesn't give any uh he really gives lip service to the bull market he doesn't call it a bull market and he and he can't give any fundamental considerations which are rather obvious uh, as to why gold is in a bull market and so i mean it, i i think it would have been a better commentary on his part if he could have given those types of fundamental reasons and just said you know i think it's it's a little bit more risky than these other businesses, but we're, we still, you know, I'm still exposed to commodities, and I like these other businesses, so that's how I'm going to play inflation. I think that would have been much better on his part. And I'll just add, I mean, there has to be, uh, you know, there are precious metals companies. I mean, there was a story in Bloomberg yesterday, I think, about how they're starting to raise their dividends, and I think uh, for the large producers, I think that could be a major catalyst to kind of pull in more mainstream money. Uh, into this bull market when they see that these large gold companies are increasing their dividends and you know i i don't know why warren and his camp they don't you know consider like an investment in franco nevada or God. silver wheaton per se i mean you know they do they, they, those companies do have commodity risk but they don't they don't have as much mining risk they're paying dividends i mean Fra franco nevada has just been a very very strong stock for the last several years and so um yeah, you know yeah. if i was him I'd, I'd i'd consider those types of things i have to tell you a funny story i, I think you were at the vancouver uh, resource investment conference right were you there yeah i was there for part yeah, of it yes I, I thought i saw you walking around i didn't have a chance to talk to you but there is a company a silver and gold producer that will go unnamed and they had a deal with silver wheaton they're selling, or maybe it wasn't Silver Wheaton, one of the, uh, it could have been Pan American, irrelevant. They're selling their gold forward at $5 an ounce. Now, in the country where the mine is located, the government taxes them on their sales as if they were made at market rates. So, in effect, for every ounce of silver they produce, it costs them, they lose four or five dollars per ounce. And that's the kind of thing that, uh, that is just insane and, you know, that makes those silver Wheatons and, and others such great investments because they've locked in those ounces at dirt cheap rates. And when they do start paying dividends, there's going to be two, f two things that happens just to just to add on to the theme you were saying, number one is it's going to blow out every short seller because short sellers, when they sell a stock short, if there's a dividend, they have to pay the dividend to the purchaser of those shares, right? And so right away, it creates demand for those shares that will reduce that short interest instantly. And then you're going to get a whole new class of investors into those shares, the income oriented investor who understands that uh, that in theory a stock sells for the uh, the total uh, current uh, value of its total future dividend uh, stream and just one other thing because you, you brought it up with uh, with Buffett but let's say let's say that you're the C CFO of Apple computer okay Jordan and you're sitting on a hundred billion dollars worth of paper currencies from every country in the world just about except for maybe I think North Korea and uh, a couple of other isolated regimes don't have Apple stores right and don't buy Apple computers what do you do with that hundred billion dollars you're sitting on and shouldn't metal be part of the CFO's portfolio Certainly, I mean, if if they're if they're going to use that to make you know investments in the capital markets, um, then certainly gold has to be a part of that portfolio. I mean, I don't I don't know what I haven't I don't follow Apple that much, but um, de depending on what they're going to do, I mean, I don't know if they're 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 looking to invest that in as I said in the capital markets or you know in growing their business. I mean, I don't know how much bigger their business can grow. It's the <laughs> law. It's the law. Of, the law of numbers. Yeah. Uh, but sir, again, if if they're if they're if they're going to you know look to the capital markets to you know pr 
preserve that money and, and earn a little bit of a return on it, then certainly gold has to be a, a part of their portfolio. Yeah, and uh, they're also a net consumer of silver. Even though everything's contracted out and they don't buy the silver directly, for them it's a natural hedge to go pick up a few hundred tons of the shiny metal and have it if they need it with the prices going up. And it's it's a guaranteed return for them because if the price goes up, then they're, they're set because they have it locked in at a lower rate. And if the price goes down a little... It's not going to be anything significant if the price really goes up. Forget it. And they're trading over $500 a share right now. Them and Google, they and Google are the bellwether stocks on what's going on in the market now, especially Apple. So, hey, Jordan, we want to thank you for being uh, on the Financial Survival Network. Really interesting conversation. I like your take on the Buffett comments and deconstructing them to find out what's really going on. Where do we find you again, and uh, can you give your email address? Uh, you can find me at thedailygold.com. That's thedailygold.com, and you can email me at jordan at thedailygold.com. All right, Jordan, it's been great having you on. We're going to put you on the rotation, and we'll have you on in uh, another month or so. Hey, Kerry, thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure.